This right here is a gift. Raise your hand. Let me hear y'all if you're an artist, if you're a filmmaker. Well, these beautiful spirits were doing it. Oh, geez, every one of them. And we have the majority of this beautiful, beautiful cast here tonight for the first time. It didn't rain. It didn't rain. And that's because, yo, the ancestor, the spirit is here in the motherfucking house. So let me, yeah, exactly. Come on. It is my absolute honor, and I'm just going to talk really slow because I think this might be one of the happiest moments of my life. Um, I want to introduce Peter Salet, Victor Rasuk, Judy Malte, Wilfrey Vasquez, Kevin Rivera, Silvestri Rasuk, Crystal Rodriguez. And anybody else I might have forgotten, but I think that's everybody. Welcome the cast and crew of Raising Victor Vargas! Yeah. They're walking slow because some of them got tacos and they don't want to trip because this is a... Yo, come on, keep it going. Don't even play. Too fly, too fly. All of them are papi chulos. Papi, chu papi chulets. Papi chulets. Papi chulets. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if we could get more chairs, if not, we do the lap thing. This is all familia. Yo, Victor, stand on my shoulders, Vic. Come on. <laughs> hello, hello. Yeah, just whatever. <laughs> Hi. So, first off, uh, Saul Turetsky. <laughs> One more, yeah, come on. So, uh, y'all know who pretty much everybody is. I want to give quick shout out. Actually, let's go down the line. Let's go down the line. Uh, Victor, introduce everybody. Oh. <laughs> um, what's up, guys? I'm Victor Rasuk. Yeah. BX! BX! Y'all came out hot! All right. Um, all right, I'm Victor here. I'm going to just give the yeah, mic to okay. everybody. Yeah. Hey everybody, good evening. My name is Lynette. I'm Altagracia's granddaughter. <laughs> Unfortunately, she couldn't be here tonight, but she asked me to come and answer whatever questions or comments I could. She loves you guys so much. She was so touched that she was invited here. Oh, sorry. I'm not good at this. Um, she wanted to be here so badly, but um, she sends all her love, as you saw, and her eccentric self is, is, still, is still there being being my grandmother. She's awesome. I love her, too. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I'm Peter Sallet. Silvestri Rasuk. Wilfrey Vasquez. Crystal Rodriguez. Woo! Julie Marte. Woo! Kevin Rivera. Yeah! And Scott McCauley. And I just want to give a really quick shout out to Melanie Diaz, who is in Vancouver. Yeah. Like Ata Gracia, she's not physically present, but her spirit is in the house. She sends her love as well. Um, so I know, I know there's a lot of stuff we want to talk about. This is, like I said, 20 years in the making. Really quick, I mentioned that this was a gift. What was the gift that this movie gave to y'all and any one of y'all can take it? Whew. Judy looked like she wanted to say something. Yeah, Judy, you go ahead. Judy. <laughs> and you go to Mike. Judy, Judy go. Um, I mean, it's just to have this kind of, you know, the love around um, all this time and it still be like the first time. It's it's a gift. I mean, we're we're very fortunate and that's what love does, right? It it expands. Mm. And it what? keeps giving, you know? So 
Well, you gave it to us. All of you gave it to us. And I think yeah. the love that you get 20 years later, that's just the reciprocation of it. So right. Yeah. Um, thank you. I mean. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we did a movie together. A movie together. <laughs> Her next movie after this. Yeah, on the outs, go check it out. Uh, uh, anybody else want to answer that question? Kevin. Uh, Yo, Kevin. Yeah. Kevin! Please, First please! All, I promise! I promise! I promise! I promise! I promise! Kevin, I promise. If y'all have Kevin, to... aka, take off your glasses. Yeah! I promise! I promise! I promise! I promise! I promise! I promise. <laughs> Not love, love, man, love, Latino love. I hope everybody could relate to this. Um, growing up as a Latino in the household, you know, five, ten heads in one apartment. You already know. <laughs> Oh, um, just uh, the Latino love, man. Just uh, growing up, you know, Lower East Side, wherever, Bronx, Brooklyn, you know, just uh, the Latino love is uh, is really, really, um, it's uh, it's 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 a different kind of love, man. Latinos love, you know, it's it's wow, Latin heat, wow. you know, it's wow, wow. you know, just um. Uh, Growing up, I hope you guys could relate to that movie, man. I hope you guys love it. In the best possible way. Well, I mean, we're talking about Latin love, Latin heat. You know, and, and the director is the personification of that. What was it? It's a joke. <laughs> I was like, wait, what, what? Well, because the reality, the reality is oftentimes Hollywood does fuck it up when you have people who aren't of that community telling that story. And this movie, Peter, is perfection. So what was that like 20 years ago making this movie and to be able to capture that? What was your process? Well, um, <laughs> well, the process was just to be a good listener and to get out of the way, really. You know, I mean, you can have a story and you can have people tell that story in, in the way that's honest to them and, and honor that and leave it at that. I think, I think one of the things, I, I love how you say it so just like so in earnest, but it's actually, as a human being, it's one of the, the things that I think most people struggle with, being able to kind of get out of their own way and to trust. I think ultimately that's one of the things of the movie is just like, and that's one of the most beautiful things about every performance in it is that it's, it's completely heart open, you know, and you don't always see that, you know. So the reality is one of the reasons why this movie resonates so much is because you shared your hearts with us. You know, you shared that Latino love. Yes. So thank you for that. Uh, what is it like watching it as a grown ass person? <laughs> Let's ask the, the, the littlest of, of those who shot this, uh, Crystal and Wolfrey, hey, and Sylvester, because you were tiny little too. I don't know who was the ages, but yeah. yeah what I think was it we, like all three of us were grown around ourselves. the same age um, when we were filming this. <clears throat> wow. Uh, <laughs> that's one word I can say as well. Uh, second off, uh, you don't know how big of a project you're a part of until you see how many people it's reached. Um, at that young age, you're not thinking about those things. You're enjoying the moment. And Peter didn't make it seem like we were filming a movie. It just felt like we were playing with friends. And it was amazing. So watching it 20-something years later, I'm here laughing at myself and laughing at everybody else that I was on stage with. And I'm just like, how? You know, and it's amazing. So, yeah. Well, watching myself again, 20 years <laughs> later, um, I felt weird. Uh, it's like, oh my God, who is that person? Uh, but um, I loved it and, and thank you, Peter. You're the bomb.com. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I, I definitely got emotional. Uh, I was tearing up uh, just understanding the core of, of all the characters um, and my character, you know, um, holding the family together and idolizing his older brother. And um, yeah, I'm, f I'm full of emotions. But uh, 20 years, I mean, I've honestly waited. I've, I've held this moment, this dream, <laughs> <laughs> this hope for 20 years. And here we are. Yeah. 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 
I think I think for me, um, when you shoot something like this, being so young and being a part of just living and being in the moment, you don't catch these things. But now being older, every little moment is like, whoa, like now I feel those emotions for real because those little things that are so real is everything, right? And it's just like, they're so big, um, but yeah, for me, that's, that, that's the main thing, like just appreciating those little moments that I couldn't appreciate back then, you know? Scott. Yeah. Scott, what was it like as a producer, you know, on a modestly sized, you know, budget at, at this time, 20 years ago? What was it like being able to kind of get all of this together, this amazing group of talent? What was what was it like as your job being able to hold? Scott! <laughs> uh, I mean, just looking back at it, it's, um, I mean, it's just how pure this film could be. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like such an incredible group of people, uh, everyone in front of and behind the camera. Um, there, uh, we had, um, it was financed by a French company. Uh, they weren't really around during the shoot. It was really like a small, like it was like the film shoot as a family. It's a little bit of a cliche to say, but I think in this case it was, it was really true. And when I watch it again, I just, it just strikes me just like how pure this film is. Like yeah. there really isn't, you don't feel a Hollywood hand of saying the story has to be this or that. And the story is just really allowed, the, the, the people are allowed to be, who they are, the story is allowed to be what it is, and um, yeah, it strikes me. Um, I mean, I've seen it in the 20 years, but maybe not for a few years, yeah. and it just seems like just a classic, really. Yeah. It always changes, right? Yeah, it always yeah. changes. But it was a real, it's a film that I think everyone involved, I mean, we're all really, really proud of. Certainly Robin, uh, my partner and I, were just super proud of the film, because it's, um, I, we didn't feel there were a lot of, there were really any compromises in this film. Mm. I mean, I think it's a film that, yeah everyone can continue to stand behind and, and love. And we do. And I think it, for the filmmakers out there, one of the common themes that are coming up, trust, get out of the way, listen, you know, which oftentimes Hollywood, you know, doesn't always let you do it. We don't let ourselves do so. Information, wisdom kind of flow in. Uh, real quick, let's get to the bochinche. Who got who on what? Give us good stories. Favorite Vasey Victor Vargas story. Go. Oh my God. I want to know. <laughs> oh Yo, Victor been real quiet. Victor no. been real quiet, Victor. No, you never that quiet. No, you know why I'm quiet? It's because it's, it's so trippy to see everybody yeah. after all these years. And I'm just like, I forgot the question you even asked earlier. Because I'm just like, Favorite oh, story. shit. I haven't seen Crystal. I haven't seen Kevin. I haven't seen Scott. Um. Damn, what's the Bochinche? No, not man? even watching. But oh, just oh, oh. Yeah, what's your favorite story? Like, I think what, my, what, what's, some of my favorite, my favorite story was... um. When I was working with, with Nino, when we were doing... Um, first Silvestri. Of all that, Silvestri. <laughs> um, when I was working with Nino, um, we were doing a lot of stuff. On the, we were doing a lot of rehearsals before we started shooting. And I remember like when we were working with P, and P was just... We, we, he just had a, a handheld camera, and we were just kind of like doing some scenarios on the roof. Remember that when we shot it on the roof? And I just remember going like... Like, how lucky am I that, like, how lucky are we that we get to work together to do something that we both were passionate about at the same, at, at that moment, especially because we just started off. And I was like, man, we're going to make this movie. I didn't know that it was going to turn out to be what it ended up being. But that was one of my favorite moments was was, was working on the movie. Um, but in terms of Bochinche, you know, nah, we don't Judy, need Judy has the Bochinche <laughs> about, about me because we went to high school together. So she got all the Bochinche. <laughs> Judy. Yeah. Guys, I have no bochinche. You're such a liar. I don't. Yeah. We don't. We don't. I'm not that type. I'm yeah, sorry. We, no, she's not. She really isn't. Yeah. But but spe <laughs> speaking of bochinche, somebody has a very interesting story as to how we got tracked down. It's in the New York Post today. If you haven't oh. seen it. Okay. But Kevin, Kevin. How did you get here? To, because Kevin was like ghost on social media. So. Wow. So, wow. Tell your story. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys ever seen me, but I am a New York uh, City MTA conductor. Woo! Yeah, man. I'm the ones that closed the train and on you when you guys are running. And <laughs> if you guys are not on the platform, I'm out. That's it. <laughs> 
<laughs> so um, I don't have Facebook and I don't have uh, Instagram or nothing like that because my wife over there, Tatiana Bavera. <laughs> 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 I don't want no problems. <laughs> so um, I was coming home from one. I was, <laughs> I was coming home one day, and you know our Latin moms always want us to work on Mother's Day or whatever day it is. So my mom sent me to work, and uh, we were having a barbecue, and I was supposed to work, and I went to work. I came out at 12, 1 o'clock. I had an emotional disturbed person trying to rob me or whatever, and uh, yes. I boated. I jetted to the booth. <laughs> So I recorded everything, and uh, since I, I don't have no Instagram or Facebook, uh, Dominic was trying to get in, co- uh, well, well, no, in he touch left, with me. He, well, he left something out. That incident made the paper. Oh, that yes. That incident yes. made the paper. The video ended up in the paper, and you couldn't see him except for a silhouette. And when we were putting this together, yeah. I hit up Judy. I was like, yo, Judy, I think this is Kevin. <laughs> and she's like, yo, that's Kevin, because you could only see the reflection in his glasses. Yeah. Yes. And then, by the grace of the Lord, energy, whatever you want to call it, yeah. something made me reach out to Theta Power. Theta if you don't know who Theta Power. Theta Power is in the house, and Theta, aka Paul Moriello, Theta, give it up for Theta Power if you don't know anybody. Yeah. Theta Power contacted his union rep who was My quoted in the article. Me. And now, Kevin is... Kevin is back in all of our lives. So, yes. Yes. But that just goes to show you how when you want something to happen and you put that energy... You make it happen. You make it happen. You make it happen. Yes. Thank you, guys. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, MTA. So the moral of the story is don't ever block the doors. Uh, Because he will fuck you you up. You better run for those trains. Run. Run. Ding, ding. (laughs) Support the union. Oh, yeah. my God. All right. Um, so let, we're going to take a couple questions in the audience. Uh, who Can we share? Uh, Wolfie, can I get your mic? Uh, if any of y'all try to steal this, we got you. All right, connect those other mics. Take a question. Hello, guys. Hi. <laughs> I've been recording you all night. So. Tag so us, tag us, tag us. Hold on. Before you talk, tagging. before you talk. I love you. I enjoyed the movie three times more watching you enjoy Recording it. Recording okay? And I was like, that's that was him. Amazing. That's him. That's her. That's them. That's them. No. <laughs> so here's my question. Um, you guys filmed this 20 years ago. You guys were young. And you guys know where we are at as Afro-Latinos. Do you think we're really being represented in film today? And I think... What you guys did back then was extraordinary because it was very authentic um, and it was very honest to who we were at that era. Mm -hmm. But today, in today's society, do you feel that we are really being represented? Because I think that this film is just like the OG of it. It's just like, it's just showing us like, this is where we need, if we didn't start from here, we need to start from here. And I'm a writer, I wrote a pilot. I'm a designer, I'm Afro-Latina, I'm Dominican, I'm from the Bronx. Let's go. Let's go. I love everything about this. My little brothers, they were like, yo, you got to see Reason Make the Marcus, that's my life. I was like, that's not your life. <laughs> I was Julie, I was just like, no, you whack, no. But how do you guys feel that Latinos are being represented in film? Because I personally feel that Victor Vargas did an amazing job, and since then it's just like, you know, it's like it hasn't been that authenticity. And you guys, you guys were in it. You guys did it and you guys showed it. And whether you were playing or having fun or whatever you did, you made us feel like we, we mattered and, we, and we, Latinos matter. <laughs> we matter. We need to be represented like this. So how do you guys feel about this? Um, I feel that we, there's always room for improvement. I feel that, you know, I've been super lucky since Vargas to keep working, and I always felt, I feel the same way you do. I don't, I think not only just Afro-Latinos, I just think Latinos, period, yeah. period. across the spectrum. Um, in saying that, I do see progress. It's not in the way that me or you right. like, you know, but I think that the reason why I do, why I keep going, because there's days that, like, I'm, I'm working on a project, and I'm, I'm granted, I'm, like, super lucky, and I feel grateful that I'm working, but then I'm always like, man, like, this is whack, you know, like this part is whack, but like I know that I'm just a, a small part of the bigger picture and that's what keeps me going is that going like, okay, this small part or this 
project is not like that it's not that it's not really representing us that well but if i could just make a splash here then somebody down the line can make it like because you got to remember too like we're also there was a generation before us right, right. there's that Ra raul julias there's the benicios there's the john leguizamos so like you got to remember that we one day people will say that hopefully about us so i always look at the bigger picture that like look am i satisfied i personally say no of course not i, I know that there's there's way more content than there is there's way more content in the world right. than that than there's being portrayed on film or television right. but i'm in it for that and that's the main reason why i'm in it even on the days when i'm like man i don't want to go to work or man this is whack because i always think about the bigger picture because i want what you just wanted right. what you just said so to answer your question no but i do see that this progress is just not right. in the pace that we we just got to keep writing like you are like how you right. said you're a writer right yeah. we got to keep acting we got to keep directing you know right. I know that Dominic, he's a writer, he's an amazing writer. I read his stuff. He's got to keep writing. You know, like that's, it's just stuff like that. Like it just, and he'll tell you too, you know, it, it happens. Like it'll happen slowly, but it, it will happen. Um, that's the only way I got to sort of go forward is by thinking that too, right? Because like, I'm like, yo, I'm in it for that reason. I'm in it because I want to represent. Right. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, that's my take on it. Hi guys, um, so my name is Maciel. I'm also Dominican. So obviously this movie is huge for Dominicana. me. You already know. De lo mio, we in here. Hella <laughs> proud. Let me tell you, this movie, I don't know if you guys know because you guys made it and then continued living your lives, but this movie, I get emotional because it is the first movie that I've seen and a lot of people in my generation have seen where we see ourselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? You guys paved the way for so much, bro. Like. And again, I've been drinking, so my emotions are probably like heightened. Yeah, girl. It's all good. <laughs> but I need y'all to understand that, like, we are so grateful for y'all because we did not see ourselves in that fashion, you know? So to see ourselves being Dominican American, that dual identity, yeah. and the way you guys portrayed it, it was like, yo, this is me. Yes. If ever I needed a voice, it was like, yo, this is me. But like um, it was said, yes, after you guys, it went kind of mute. So my question is about what was the, it's about the source, really. I'm trying to understand because as an actor and writer myself, I'm trying to understand how you guys put that together. Because from my research, because you know we researched down, yes. my, from my research, I know the writer isn't necessarily Dominican, but the authenticity that was captured is incredible. So I'm trying to understand how you guys put that together. Um, what was that process like? Just so that for me, moving forward, is something that I can incorporate because I feel like it's necessary and it's something that it's missing. Um, and I also want to say, sis, your abuela, she's our abuela. Yeah. Please. Okay, I will. I will. Yeah. All right, show her, please. I want to say that your abuela is our abuela. Like. Yeah. All of ours. Yeah. Ours. Alta all gracia. Of ours. We love you. We, we love, love you. Alta gracia. We love you. We love you. Because, no, 100%. Because the work that she did, I was telling my homegirls too, sitting here, I was like, yo, her even being in a bata. Like, I'm telling you, the authentic, like, the authenticity is crazy. That was my abuela. You know what yeah. I mean? Going to DR and seeing that. Like, I'm telling you, I'm not gassing it when I'm saying, like, the way we were represented was okay. so crazy and it was never seen and after you guys again it was very muted yeah. you guys held that spot for so long so i'm interested in knowing like how and what was that process like i think Thank from you. i think from the cast point of view now that i'm thinking about it um piggybacking off of peter's uh response earlier is that is that is that you killed it <laughs> no is that um we held each other accountable to keep it authentic. So if one of us was veering off of authenticity in the scene, I mean, not only did, the, did, the, did Pete, the director, you know, hold us and see it, but the sauce, you know, the, that authenticity, we, we held it for each other, as well as the Big Papa holding it for all of us. Another question? I did. Hi. Hola. 
Hi, hi, hi. I'm super nervous, and I've had a couple drinks myself, so. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm actually a New York City teacher, and I teach this film every year. I'm mm. starting it on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and my students absolutely love it. And I, um, so my, I, I teach at John Mann High School in Queens, and we're a 60% Latino school. Um, and I'm the only, we're the only um, period that we have like Latino studies in the whole school. So it's, it's amazing to be able to teach her film. And my question is, I guess, because my sister's recording, um, what, <laughs> um, 20 years later, what advice would you give my students, um, you know, who are watching this film and are kind of getting, getting into the dating world and figuring out how, you know, kind of uh, how you, what it's like. Y'all gonna ask for <laughs> dating advice from these folks? Right. So, what I know advice, them. <laughs> what advice would you give my students who are really excited to hear from you? And yeah. we're starting this unit on Monday. Um, yeah. So, I, I leave it open to you all. Crystal, Judy. <laughs> and, wait, can I also say Harold is the favorite character every year? Woo! Every year. Woo! Take off your glasses. <laughs> love to hear from you and I and I also just want to say how excited I am and, and how amazing it is. I've been texting my students from years ago mm. who've been watching this and I leave it open to you. What advice do you give my students now? Um, I would tell your students to, to be there th themselves and to never give up and go for your dreams. Whatever you, you think you want to do, you can do. I yeah. would tell them. <laughs> Take off your glasses. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Ducks? Can I get a kiss? <laughs> I will tell them yeah. to grasp every opportunity Amen. you can. Because I came in there with no headshot, with no resume, let them know, let them know. with TNT castings. <laughs> My cousin, oh, yo, give it up for Yuli. Give it up for Yuli. Yeah. TNT Castings telling me open auditions. Kevin, go in there, go ask yourself, go act crazy. And Peter Sala giving me a chance in a lifetime and just running with it. So, you know, just go get every opportunity you can and just run with it. Yo, wait, real quick, you open the door. Yuli, please come up here. Yuli! Please. Yuli! We're talking about you yes, discovered Yes, 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 yes. You discovered this cast. Yes, this is a yes, casting yes. Director. Yuli! I didn't even know you were here. You all creeping. TNT. He can't hide out. Come Yuli. on now. He can't hide out. <laughs> 50. <laughs> what was it like? I'm, I'm going to throw a question at you. Why are you, why are you, why are you giving daps? What was it like casting this project? Mike Shake was it? Yeah. <laughs> he got bars. Oh shit. Um, what's up everybody? I was trying to be on the D low, man. Ah. Uh Razor Victor Vargas, I think was the hardest well, it was the hardest project I've ever cast in my career at that point. And Ganador just beat it. But um Woo! But the problem is in that time period. There was nothing Latin. So why would a Latin kid want to study acting? So, so, so every kid that came in was terrible. You know, like really bad. Like me and P were fighting. He's like, what are you doing, man? What's going on? Like, like, and I'm just like, yo, I'm, I'm, I, there's no kids. You know, go to the theater. We did. It was two kids in theater class. You know, like it, it was the hardest thing on the planet Earth. You know, and... um. Like I said, this, everybody in the cast, I know them personally. Like, the, 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 the Harold character was a nut job like him. So I told this guy, I said, you know what? You should go in and do this shit. You might get it. Cause we, so I started casting the real people, not actors. Like, say, the grandmother, she's my aunt. You know? So, so we saw every, every, every amazing older Latina actress is union. You know, so it was a non-union thing. So who was going to do that? Anybody that age had to work or be a grandmother. So they, they didn't have time to study acting or pursue a career. There was no opportunities for them. So same thing with her. This grandmother was that person. So I said, you know what? Mommy, will your aunt 
be crazy enough to be in a movie. <laughs> she just has to be herself, you know. So, so for the audition, she came in and she, she just ad libbed because she didn't couldn't read, you know. So I was like, just look. The kids came home, yell at them, action, <laughs> you know. And, and Pete's like, yo, they're not reading. She's not reading my shit. What's going on here? Like, yo, trust me. Just give her direction and she will deliver. You know, so so like all like everything you heard, her age, La Oaxaca, all that shit is real. Like that's a true story. But but like I said, I don't want to be here. I don't. It's not about me. It's about them. I don't want to talk. I talk too much. But uh, but it was a it, it was a tough journey, and, and and this casting has been a blessing. I've never seen the movie since the premiere. Wow. So this is the first time I've seen it since then, and I'm blown away. Like I'm a huge fan of everybody now. Like, like, different level. I'm going to give the mic up, and I just want to bow to all you guys on stage. You, you guys are phenomenal. You guys are phenomenal. I'm going to step off the stage. This is your show, guys. We have a question yeah, over here. Uh, hold on. Yeah. Uh, Dom, Dom, yeah. right here. I just want to ask a question to uh, the director about... Um, huh? Oh, my bad, right here. There you go. Uh, yeah, I just thought the movie like was really authentic. Like I felt like I went to high school all you. Uh, so I just wanted to know what was the writing process like? Did you write a script and did you consult with the cast about, you know, uh, how to keep things real authentic or was this like an improv setting where you gave them the points and you had them like act out in their, their true selves? Yeah, we, my, Eva Vivas and I who co-wrote this with me, she, Woo! we made a short, we made a short film before this. And it was, um, and it introduced us to many of these actors. And we came to know them, and we came to know a lot about their lives. And then we wrote together a script about their lives to the best of our ability with the information that we had. And then we didn't give it to them. And we didn't give it to them because we didn't want them to uh, interpret our writing about their lives. We wanted them to perform moments from their lives in the way that they would live it. So we kept the script as a guide and what they got were their objectives in the scene. And then we would have an improvisation that amounted to a sort of the raw material for a scene and then we'd give them a line or two here or there verbally to give it some more shape. This way, when they were found themselves in a, in a dramatic situation, what they would draw on to realize it in the scene was their lives and they would not reach for the script, they would reach from their lives. And that's why it feels more honest. It's because that's all they had to work with. We have a question? Hello, everyone. My name is Carlene. I'm an organizer from the Bronx. Thank you so much for your piece of art. The last 20 years, make some noise. Woo! I'm joined today by Chuck, who owns the lot that we're in. Thank you, Chuck. Thank and Assemblywoman Chuck. Natalia Fernandez. Woo! Uh, being someone that's been on the front lines the last year and a half and the last 20 years trying to work to better my community, whether it's Red Hook, Brooklyn, Washington Heights, or Harlem, I find the biggest obstacle is finding people that believe in our visions and fund them, especially right now in these difficult socioeconomic times for Latinos of all socioeconomics and colors. Hearing that you guys were financed by someone that was French, right? And there's white men that help make this vision come to fruition, Chuck. Again, thank you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what can we do, right? And Victor, I saw you outside earlier, right? We were joking. They got out of, the, of a cab, and there was literally people walking with the compra, right? They had the little cart, and I was like, yo, we're in the Bronx. There's a lot of young people. There's not a lot of art being made like this, and there's not a lot of real conversations being had with Latinos. And in this crossroads, where even right now we have to acknowledge that in this moment, our black or trans brothers and sisters, and we, we look at the stage and say it's not diverse enough, how do we get the financing to make these visions come to fruition today? Because that's what I wanna find, and I wanna take these young people off the streets and invest in their visions, but it's hard to find the chucks or the French financiers or the politicians that will fund money. And so whether it's Victor or anyone else, how do we keep going when our community doesn't either put the resources into these things or we can't get the money right now from other communities to do these things? Thank you again for all the work everyone does that's seen and unseen. You got that? Anyone want to take that? 
I'll, I'll just say something. So, um, I mean, the, the, um, you know, the, the, the beginning of this film was actually a short film uh, that Pete made with um, Judy and Victor called uh, Five Feet High and Rising. And Pete, you made that out of NYU, right? Um, and that film went to the Cannes Film Festival where it won an award. And that's where, and I should give a shout out to our other producer, Alain de la Mata, who, uh, who saw the film as part of a company called Wild Bunch. And, but it, uh, um, and the, film, the short film won a prize in Cannes. Uh, it's a very modest film, um, uh, incredible film. And if you're a fan of this film, you should track down, I think on one of the DVDs floating around, you can, you can find it. Uh, on YouTube, yeah, I'm sure there's a YouTube yeah. rip. So, um, but uh, it, it all came from from that uh, from that short film. Like everything flowed after that, and uh, there wasn't, uh, you know, people. There's a real purity and beauty to that film that people were attracted to. It won prizes. It went to different festivals. Um, uh, we found partners. Um, uh, Pete found partners from that. So um, yeah, it's not always about like having some high-powered connection or agent or something. It's making something really pure and good and trusting that it can connect to other people, um, which is what uh, Five Feet High and Rising did. I think it's really hard. There's no silver bullet there, but if you can show if you can show somebody as opposed to telling them about it, I think that helps. If you can make them feel, people remember how you make them feel. They don't always remember what you tell them, but if you can make them feel something, I think you might have a foot in the door. That was the logic here. And the, and the other you know, lesson I think in this film is, you know, is to find the universal in the, sp in the specific. Uh, so it was a specific family, a specific story, but everyone can connect to, um, to the emotions in the film. So to trust in, in, trust in depicting the specific. And show them as opposed to tell them. And we have our last question. Hi. Hi. Well, I'm Violeta Galagalza from Spanish Harlem. I'm a choreographer and I've Woo! been in the industry for many years. My son played Graffiti P in the movie In the Heights. Woo! And many of my dancers are in the Heights as well. Been there, did that, done that. But I wanted to talk about exact your girl. You're my twin. I was like, she's taking it out of my... Because I'm a nonprofit organization based in Spanish Harlem for 32 years, saving lives, training amateurs to become professionals that can't afford to be in that platform. And with Ulysses, I wanted to show him off before y'all shout him out. I was like, he's the man because he's a Latino that's showing a lot of other Latinos because there's not many Latinos that are great that can be greater than what they think they are because we're limited. We're thinking that we can't afford it. We're not great, we didn't go to school for it. But there's so many. My son is just a famous dancer. He, very well known, 20 years old. But Lin-Manuel and John Chu was like, yo, we're looking all over for Graffiti P, but that's Graffiti P right there. <laughs> exact, oh, the rain. That's the well, blessing. anyway, back it to you, Calixo. I can't ask the question right now because the oh. rain. But anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, you take over. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for coming. God bless us, for real. We're going to take a quick picture with all this yeah. cast. We're going to call it a wrap. Yeah. But thank you, everybody. Please thank spread you. the word. Thank you, Follow guys. us. Post that on the ground.